Hello and welcome to Sideshow's First Look. Today we're looking at the Queel and Blurg six scale figure set by Hot Toys from The Mandalorian. The exterior of the box is going to be in the two toned black with a bright colored cigar band around its base. All throughout are going to be photos of the figure and Blurg. When we lift the top of the shoebox off, we're going to have a larger inside photo featuring Queel on his Blurg and the Mandalorian on his sold separately. When we lift that off, we're going to see the trays underneath. With the cover removed, Queel will be in his own case, next to it all of his accessories. Lifting off that upper tray below will be the Blurg, the Blurg base, Queel's independent base and figure stand. Here are all the pieces to the Queel and Blurg set all laid out. The Blurg on his display base. Queel, his bucket of feed for the Blurg, the blaster and magnetic tranquilizer dart, four swap out hands, wearable goggles, two pouches to attach to the belt, a magnetic backpack, and his welder. And now let's take a look at everyone's favorite Ugnot, Queel. We begin our look with the portrait. Up on the top, he is wearing a leather helmet, and this has all been sculpted and textured and is molded in plastic. The intricate stitching all the way around, as well as the circles around each of the ear area. Those areas have flat black accents, as well as three little lines with a bright copper color underneath. The face itself has the wrinkles in the forehead and the dropped down jowls. The entire paint scheme on there is done in warm tones. Bushy eyebrows, the mutton chops, and the hair out of the back of the helmet are all in a light gray. The lips have a light mist of moisture to them, so they have a wet look. And we can see the teeth that have also been given a gloss inside. We get down onto his costume. Around Queel's top shoulders is going to be a shawl-like collar. It's a cotton material with a printed web style design in a darker brown over it. The entire outer edge of it has a wire to allow us to pose it. Underneath that cowl is going to be a medium brown vest. Up on the top shoulders, that same pattern that we saw at the shawl is replicated here and down the sides. Around the midriff, he wears a belt with an aged bronze buckle that has intricate designs, and it goes through two loops on the side. That vest is over an olive drab shirt, and right there at the elbows, they've been rolled up and have leather-like straps holding them up. Molded and sculpted leather-style gauntlets on each hand with little stitches, buckles, as well as vents. On his hands are going to be leathered gloves that are padded and beautifully painted. The pants are done in a soft cotton and have a stitched seam down the front. That web-like pattern that was up on the cowl is repeated here on the covers of the pockets. Down onto the boot, it is all one solid piece and has raised design throughout the spat. The painting on it gives it an almost aged brass or copper look to it. And the top of the boot does appear to have a leather-like look even though it's sculpted. Queel is designed to be the right size to fit with the rest of the Mandalorian figures, and he stands at nine and a half inches high. Now let's look at the articulation on our Queel figure. The head and neck are all one solid piece. It's ball jointed, and we can rotate the head side to side, lean it, as well as tilt forward and lift up. The jaw itself is also articulated and can open or close. The shoulders can extend the arm straight out to the side at 90 degrees. A butterfly joint lets us move the arm forward and back. We can lift the arm straight up as well as backward. The elbow is a double joint and a cut bicep lets us move that arm inward and outward. Traditional ball joint on the wrist gives us a full range of motion. The chest and torso are all one solid piece, and so most of the motion is going to come from down here on the legs and hips. The leg can extend out to the side. It can kick forward, as well as back, and the entire leg can rotate outward and inward. A double jointed knee gives us plenty of range of motion, and even though it's one solid piece, 
The boot does have a ball joint underneath that lets us rotate the boot as well as lift and lower the toe. Here's a layout of all of the accessories and pieces for our Queel and Blurg. There are four additional hands, a double finger pointed right hand, a loose gesturing hand, and a right and left gripping hand. There's also the backpack and the two pouches that attach onto the figure. And they are all sculpted, molded, and painted to look like actual leather. On the side of the backpack, we have two greeblies as well as some brass clips on the top to show that flap going over. The pack attaches to the figure by magnets on either side. The two pouches also given that leather molded and painted look and attach onto the belt via clips. Next, we have the goggles that go over the portrait of the figure and have a translucent red lens. Quill's blaster features a painted wooden style stock, dark black metal, hints of brighter metallic, and a leather-like strap with actual metal clasps. A micro welder with an articulated arm, a tranquilizer dart that magnetically attaches to the upper left leg of the Blurg, and lastly, a bucket of food for the Blurg. It rises up about three quarters of the way, has some good weight to it, and an actual metal handle that can be slung to either side. The entire outside of the bucket is heavily weathered, pitted, and rusted. Quill's independent figure stand is a wraparound waist cinch printed on the top, the Arvala 7 Desert, and a chrome name badge right on the front. Quill's beast of burden, the Blurg, is all done in dark, flat greens and multiple textures throughout. Incredible sculpting and design, giving it that almost elephant-like skin. Multiple paint applications make the Blurg much more lifelike. In the upper area, we have the dark and light greens spotted throughout with the little black dots. There on the front, we're gonna have that light pink, the deeper red, and the yellowing of the teeth. The light color on the underbelly and down on the underside of the tail. The tail has just enough curve to convey some motion. On the face of our blurg, we have the open mouth, all given a glossy look to really show off those inside gums and the teeth. The teeth have been given a yellow-like wash to show their age. Right above those sculpted nostrils is going to be the large eye, and these are a high-polished plastic that we can even see the pupil in. The bridle is permanently attached into the mouth and features a metal ring on either side. The wrap here, hand done in actual fabric. The metal ring look that was on the bridle is also done here where it looks to be connected to the saddle with actual metal rivets and a metal ring. All the leather pieces here done in a vegan leather. The saddle on the Blurg is permanently attached to make sure that your pose is perfect. There on the left side, they've gone so far as to even sculpt and paint in a rip in the fabric. Wrapped around, sculpted and painted, what looks like actual cloth wrapping on either side. The Blurg also features points of articulation here in the arms, as well as the legs, to give it more interaction with our Queel figure. And on each of the Blurg's feet are going to be his three toes. From nose to tail, the Blurg measures at 25 inches. With the Queel and Blurg displayed together, it stands at 22 inches high and weighs a little over six pounds. The Blurg can be removed from the base and stands well on its own. The Rocky style display base is going to hold the Blurg. Two permanently attached foot pegs allow the Blurg to stand on top. This has been Sideshow's first look at the Queel and Blurg six scale figure set by Hot Toys from The Mandalorian. For more information about this figure, as well as the payment plans available, make sure to follow the link below. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to let your geek sideshow.